845年突然現れた超大型巨人。Little bit of a recap. Right, so one of the questions already is what changed? Because it seemed like that big one, the Colossal Titan, just appeared out of nowhere. There was a flash of light, right? Night of the Disbanding, Restoration of Mankind Part 2. Love these long titles. Wow, that was a big time jump. There's also a lot of training, two years. I guess they need it. This guy hasn't lost a step. Nice. Good guy. True comrade right there. Reiner, right. Yeah, for good reason. Wow. Hell yeah. That makes sense. He seems like a smart guy. <laughs> the music in this show is so good all around, consistently. Annie Leonhardt. Alright. That's the guy that had the argument with Eren, right? I'm doing my best. I'm trying to keep track of all these people. There's a lot of characters. I'm sure I will eventually know all of them. For the brief period before they die. Um, yeah. Armin really impressed me there. The fact that he doesn't want to be a burden. The kid has heart. And I already like Reiner. I liked him from the last episode with that conversation he had with Eren. Where they had that bonding moment. That was really nice. Is that Sasha Blouse? Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, I want to hear what he has to say about her. Of course. Oh, wow. Oh no. Yeah, he's very motivated. Right, right. That's sort of his defining characteristic so far. Purpose, drive. Yeah, I was about to say, why hand-to-hand -hand combat? Although that might come up. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, not even knowing the show at all, I have a strong feeling there will be human enemies. And I feel like the Titans probably have some kind of human origin, right? Like, they didn't spontaneously generate out of thin air. The lone wolf. And he's about to kick your ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he doesn't do it that way. It's a good question. Interesting. That's weird. So Annie seems really deeply cynical and disillusioned with the whole system. I mean, it does make sense based on what I know about the system, where it's a kingdom, right? So you'd want the best guards to protect the king. That seems to make some sense. But I think there maybe is some weirdness with the system as a whole. It hasn't been explored too much yet, but I feel like there's some kind of class thing going on here. We saw that when the Titans first attacked and the people in the inner ring were sort of bitter about the people in the outer ring coming in. But also it plays into the theme of like self-preservation versus duty and where that line is. Like, how much are you responsible for using your talents if it means putting your life on the line? It makes some sense to think that every individual has their own idea of where that line falls for them. But I can also understand why Aaron would be really torn up about that. Because he's all consumed with this idea of destroying the Titans. <laughs> this guy's an expert. He's trying hard to impress Mikasa. Right. Yeah, you would imagine some people actually do want to help the king or serve the king. These two are destined to have conflict. Oh, wow, that's right out in the open. Okay. You just said that in front of everybody. Good job. <laughs> I see how Aaron resolves situations. Conflict resolution. I feel like Aaron's gonna have a lot of trouble being this principled. Yeah, he's completely going against the grain. Why you gotta throw Sasha under the bus? That's not nice. Two of them are deaf. 
Who got in? Top 10 trainees by score from the 104th training class. Krista Lenz. Sasha- Sasha Blouse made it? How? Aaron made it, but he's gonna decline the military police. Annie made it. Reiner made it. Mikasa's top of the class. An unprecedented genius, right? That's what he said. By the way, speaking of Mikasa, the last episode, I totally missed the implication that it might have been her that sabotaged Eren's gear. I'm not sure that's true, but that's my hunch now. Because right after he fails for the first time, she gives that speech about how he should quit. Right. Of course not. Yeah, he's out for blood. <laughs> nah, I bet he's not. I have so many mixed feelings about this. Like, I don't think the right choice is fighting the Titans or the military police. I think it really depends on the individual and their motivation. It seems like some of them, they want to join the military police for noble reasons, not for their own selfish interests, right? Maybe they think that's their highest duty. Eren obviously wants to go out beyond the walls to fight the Titans because that's his drive. And he's motivated by not just the pure desire to help mankind, but also anger, frustration, resentment. And I think that that's fine. You know, I like, like I said, get out of Eren's way, like let him do his thing. And I'm sure he'll inspire other people to greatness who are otherwise sort of on the fence or scared about their own lives. But I think that there's sort of like an over application of judgment about people who do not see things Eren's way. And I feel like he's sort of a risk to himself in this society, which seems to be kind of against him. Like we saw from the very beginning that people look down upon the scouts. Now there are definitely some people who want to join the military police because they would rather turn a blind eye to their own responsibility and they would rather just live in comfort. And those people will benefit from the sacrifice of the people who are risking their lives. And I agree, that's sort of frustrating. It's interesting thinking about Aaron because my prediction based on the fact that it's a show would be that he's a force for good and that he's a force for inspiration. But my feeling about it like in real life as a person is that he's a huge liability. Um, people are going to hate him for that. Because people don't like it when you shake things up and when you force them out of their comfort, when they're faced with their own responsibility. Like you're sort of on this teetering point between hero and outcast. I think one key thing that's missing from his demeanor right now that would go a long way in actually bringing people to his side is walking the walk. He hasn't had the chance to do that yet because they're just cadets, but I think that him actually being in action and becoming a war hero or something like that, that would give him so much credibility for what he's saying. <laughs> I bet a lot of them are. Mikasa will too. Right, they have the seniors, right? Yeah, I wouldn't count on that. Hans, I miss this guy. I'm glad they have a good relationship on some level. I'm sure this is a long time coming. Yeah. Nice. I'm really happy to see that because it wasn't Han's fault. He probably ended up saving them. And it's good to see Eren channeling his energy in the right way. Like, it feels so much better that they're in it together against the Titans rather than him holding a grudge. He matured a lot in the time jump. So he did inspire some people. Sasha? Oh my god. I have a feeling she likes food. I'm not quite sure though. What about Jean? John, whatever. He's joining. What? This is real? This is happening. Right at that moment too when he's at his high. That's always how that happens. We're not gonna lose anyone this early, are we? There you go. Did you, she just hook his foot? Well, I guess it's better than death. Put your training to use. Get out of his way. Look at him taking charge. Damn, he's been waiting for this moment for so long. <laughs> Those eyes. They made eye contact. 
That's respect right there. No! Another show with these cliffhangers. I don't know if I can take it. But I noticed that this time again, it was a flash of light. It didn't walk up, right? It just appeared. So there's something doing this. And it seems to have been so perfectly timed. I don't know what to make of that. Although it could have just been for dramatic effect. But yeah, my little boy Aaron is all grown up. I kind of would have enjoyed a little bit more training just because I really, really loved that section. But I understand we got a lot of stuff to do. We got a lot of action to get to. I love that brief moment with Aaron right before the Titan attacks. Like, I kind of understand that feeling. Having visualized a dream and a goal for years and years and years. The moment you realize that it's all coming true, it's such a sweet feeling. Like, I've had that feeling where I just feel invincible for a moment or just unstoppable. But like in the show, those moments are usually short-lived. Either because, you know, you sort of become aware of yourself and you become aware of the risks of getting ahead of yourself and getting too big-headed. Or life has a way of knocking you back down, which is what happened there. But still, it's cool to see his development, even though it happened really quickly. There are a lot of indicators that he's matured a lot, and one of them, I think, was the conversation he had with Hans. His way of interpreting his pain and channeling it, it's not totally healthy, but it could be a lot worse, right? At least he's using it productively, and at least he's not being hateful of others. That being said, I feel like there is a lot of danger for Eren, just in the way that he deals with people. And I don't know if the show is covering this necessarily, or if it's intentional. It's just my feeling about humanity, like, Eren's gonna rub a lot of people the wrong way. Or he'll inspire a lot of people. He's gonna be polarizing. You know, he would be polarizing one way or the other. He's not gonna just fit in. He's gonna rock the boat and that is gonna make some people love him but also probably make some people hate him and like i said i think the real test for him is how he performs in battle and can he walk the walk right because he talks the talk that i think will take him from being someone with a lot of ideas to being an actual hero like a heroic figure that inspires people and i think another key thing for him is that he has the support of his friends you know because you can sort of imagine if he was alone he could slip into craziness i feel like he, he walks a tightrope with his personality so i mentioned that i've seen some of the episodes i'm pretty sure that i've seen past this but honestly it it seems new to me, like I, I remember almost nothing from it. But I'm remembering now that the reason I stopped watching is not only because of mystery boxes, although that was a part of it. Another reason is because, for reasons I can't explain, there's this undercurrent in the show of just absolute tension. You know what I mean? And it's not just the Titans, it's like something about the characters and the writing and the dynamics. I'm like on edge watching it. Even in this episode where there was no invasion or no attack until the end, I just feel like it's gritty. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Let me know if you guys feel the same way. But yeah, that's the end of episode four. Before the video ends, I gotta give a very very special shank shank you shank you thank you so much <laughs> before the video ends i gotta give a very special shout out to all my patrons for all the support thank you for making these videos possible a very special thank you to those who joined the top tier on patreon this week john yinks logan bradford and madeline harris thank you to you thank you to all my patrons thanks to all of you for watching love you guys always and i'll see you next time for episode five and the resolution of this massive cliffhanger